Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to add and subtract rational expressions. Now in acting, adding and subtracting rational expressions, they're just like adding and subtracting fractions. Um, we need to make sure we have common denominators, all right? So just remember when we were adding fractions, um, you know, for instance, let's just do 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Remember, first thing we want to do is make sure that we add the numerators and leave the denominator the same. Like 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is now equal to 2 fourths, right? The 2 is how much you have, and the 4 is basically saying, you know, what your divide, what is everything's being sectioned off. And then we always want to simplify at the end. That is no difference with adding and subtracting rational expressions. We're going to follow the exact same, um, exact same process. And as well, too, is what happens if we have a different, um, different denominators. Then what we have to do is determine what the least common denominator is, a number that both of my denominators divide into, the smallest of those, and then we multiply everything by, I'm sorry, that's to get rid of them. We want to multiply by whatever values are going to make us have our LCD. So in this case, I'd have 4 over 12, plus in this case, I'd have 3 over 12. Now they have common denominators, and I can divide. So I'm sorry for those of you that are like, I don't need a uh, review on fractions. But usually, you know, with, with uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions, that's usually where students make, uh, make mistakes, is their fraction operations. Because you know, with rational expressions, the only thing added that we're going to have is making sure that we're factoring, and then identifying the LCD when we have expressions, not just numbers. It is a little bit more difficult, but I'll work through it and you know, kind of help you out. So with the first three examples, though, um, are pretty basic because you can see that the denominators are the same. So again, it doesn't matter what the denominators are. It doesn't matter if they're terms or expressions. As long as they are exactly the same, we just combine them or combine the numerators and leave the denominator the same. So in this case, I am going to have, um, now again, when you're adding them, it's basically saying 15 plus 5 over 4x. Well, obviously, 15 plus 5 is 20 over 4x. Just remember, though, we can simplify that. 4 goes into 20 five times. So that's 5 over x is my final answer. These are going to be kind of crammed, so um, I will be using the red marker as well to kind of mix it up. And then I'll put a box over my final answer. Um, over here, you have 16x squared is the same for both denominators. However, if you look at the numerators, you notice that those are not like terms. One is a variable, one is a number. So we can't combine them like we did over here. So I'm simply actually just going to leave this as x minus 4 over 16x squared. And that is as simple as we can basically get. Um, over in this example, we have the exact same thing. Here's a 3x squared, and that's a 6x. So therefore, we can't combine anything further than that. So we'll just do 3x squared plus 6x all over my common denominator of x minus 8. Okay. So again, it doesn't matter what the denominator is as long as they are the same. All right. So now let's kind of get into how do we determine what the LCD is. So the easiest way to determine the LCD is to multiply your terms. If you remember, I had that example, you know, one third times or one third plus, you know, one fourth. To find the LCD, you basically want to find the number that both three and four divide into, the smallest number that three and four divides into. Well, if all I'm going to do is, you know, let's just add in another number. Let's add in one over x x also has to divide into. Well, think about what is it that x divides into? x, x squared, x cubed, x fourth, right? So the smallest term that x is going to divide to is x. The smallest number that x squared will divide into is x squared. So if you just add a variable x, that just you're just going to add an x basically to your LCD. So you can treat basically the numbers as one and the x's as another. Um, we're not going to get to it down here or up here, but we are going to get to it down here. And I figure since I might as well just get into this now. Well, what about if we had, if I did one more, 1 over x minus 1? Now, this gets really, really confusing because people, most students understand the numbers. And then throwing a variable kind of makes some sense as well. But once I throw in an expression, it's like, what are the multiples of x minus 1? And that's where people start getting confused because you can think of the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, right? 4, 4, 4 8, 12, 16. The multiples of x, x, x squared, x cubed. But what are the multiples of x minus 1? Well, here's the thing. Don't worry about thinking about the multiples or trying to like understand. It doesn't really, you don't need to. What you need to know is, I know that 3 times 4 times x gives me the LCD. So by following that pattern, I know that if I multiply by x minus 1, 
that is also going to be a part of my LCD. And that is the truest case. This is the most simplest form of that expression. So we don't care about what the further multiples are. We just care about the simplest form, right? Because we're looking for the LCD. So all you'd simply do is just multiply the rest of it and then leave that as x minus 1. So anyways, I just thought I'd add that in there. Um, so when I do these problems, the first thing I like to do is make sure I multiply by, I make sure I identify my LCD. So on the left side, I have 5x, and the, on the right side, I have 6x. So the LCD of 5 and 6, I'll do these separately. The LCD of 5 and 6 is 30, and the LCD of x is just x. So therefore, I'll say the LCD is equal to 30x. So if I have 5x, what do I need to multiply that by to get me to 30x? Well, I just need to multiply by 6. Remember, whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do in the numerator because we're producing equivalent fractions. We, if you don't multiply the same number in the top and bottom, you change the value of the fraction, right? And that's not what our approach is in, this, in what we're doing. We're trying to add the fraction. So we're just trying to rewrite them with different denominators, but not change the value of the fraction. Here I have 6x. If I, what do I need to multiply 6x by to get it to be 30? Well, that's just going to be a 5. OK, so now I can multiply straight across. 6 times 12 is going to be 72 over 30x, plus 7 times 5 is 35 over 30x. Now you can see they have common denominators. I'm just going to add the uh, numerator, so that's going to be 107 divided by 30x. And no more further can we go in there. Um, so in this case, uh, we have the LCD, right? So our LCD of 3 and 4 is going to be 12. Hopefully that should be pretty obvious for you. The LCD of x squared and x, though, gets a little confusing because the, L, the smallest term of x is x, but you have to go with the least of both of them, right? So the multiples of x is x, x squared. The multiples of x squared are x squared, x cubed, x fourth. So you've got to go with the smallest of the two, which would be the x squared. Because remember, both of the terms have to divide into x squared. If you were just to choose x, x squared doesn't evenly divide into x squared. So it has to be the smallest of the two. So if I have 4, 3x, 4, I'm sorry, if I have 3x squared and I need to get it to be 12x squared, all I need to do is multiply that by a 4. So I'll multiply that on top and bottom. And if I have a 4x and I want that to be 12x squared, that means I need to multiply this by 3x. Okay? Now I know that my numerator is not going to, eh, let's just multiply it out, we'll have room. So 4 times 2 is 32. For, uh, that's going to be 12x squared minus 15x over 12x squared. Now again, we have the common denominator, but we don't have common numerators. So therefore, I'm just going to leave this as a 32 minus 15x all over 12x squared. Now I will say, we always want to see, you know, is there common terms maybe we can factor out. And that's always something you want to look into, especially when you're adding and subtracting, is a lot of times, you know, a task or a teacher will say, make sure you put it in, you know, simplest forms. Well, if you look at this, you can see that between all of these terms, they're all divisible by 3. Actually, they're not all divisible by 3. 3 does not divide into 32. So therefore, that is our simplest um, form that we have here. So we're all good on that regard. Okay, so now let's get into these. Um, <clears throat> now let's go and get into the expressions here. So the, this makes it. This is where a lot of students get trouble is when we have these expressions. The monomials with numbers and variables, those are usually okay. But once we get into expressions, people start freaking out about that LCD portion. But again, if you can just think of it, it's already in its smallest form. You just need to multiply it by the other LCD or the other smallest form of your expressions. So. <clears throat> Let's just think this is part of my LCD. So whenever you see an expression, just put that automatically in the LCD. That's already in its lowest expression. Now, let's just find the LCD of the remaining terms, which is 5 and 5x. Well, the smallest term for 5, what is the smallest um, value that 5 and 5x divide into? Well, that's obviously 5x, right? Because 5 divides into 5x, and 5x divides into 5x. So now, all I need to do, is that's my LCD. So if I already have 5x here, that means I just need to multiply by x minus 4 over here. And then over here, I just need to multiply by x on the top and bottom. Now, um, for simplicity purposes and time purposes, I'm not going to multiply out the x minus 4 times x minus 4s. Um, that probably on a test or quiz would be multiplied out and simplified. Um, but for time purposes, I'm just going to leave everything in factored form. Because we can still multiply them out. 
Um, this would actually end up being, actually, do I have anything that's crazy? Yeah, that's not going to be fun. OK. So let's just do this as x minus 4 squared plus 12x all over, I'm going to write the 5x in front of it, x minus 4. OK? And again, I'm, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. I'm not leaving this in simplest terms. You would want to, uh, you could expand that out. And then actually, let's just kind of simplify it. Nothing else can be simplified, right? I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm cheating here. So x squared minus uh, 8x. Let's see, it's going to be plus 16 plus 12x divided by 5x squared minus 20x. OK, so then therefore those two added up. So my final answer would be x squared plus 4x plus 16. All over here, I could do 5x squared minus 20x. But then it gets into, like, you could factor out a 5x. And like, so it really all depends on your problem. Just want to make sure you guys are aware of you know, how to multiply, um, how to multiply that out, and how to expand it, as well as to keep it in the factor form. I prefer, though, to keep it in this format, uh, just for simplicity's sake. Um, and that's the way that I'll do for these remaining problems. OK, so the next one in here is we do have an expression x plus 6, and we have another expression x plus 4. So obviously, remember I said, once you see one expression, that is a part of your LCD. So the only other part of my LCD is the other expression, which is already in simplest term. So finding the LCD is pretty simple. It's just the two expressions, x plus 4 and x plus 6. So what you're going to do now is to get your LCD, I'm just going to multiply by x plus 4. And then I'll multiply by plus 4, and then x plus 6. Okay. So therefore, what I have here is 3 times x plus 6 minus 1 times x plus 4 all over my expression x plus 4 times x plus 6. Now, in this example, you can see it's not too bad to like multiply this out, right? You could do 3x plus 18 minus x uh, minus 4 all over x squared plus 10x plus 24. I don't know why I said I wasn't going to do this, and then now I'm doing it, right? <laughs> Um, so that becomes 3x. But usually people will make mistakes here. So, you know, this is a, you know, you could do everything right, but then make a mistake on simplifying, which, you know, I want to make sure I'm judging you, you know, when I'm grading something, I want to make sure I'm judging you on applying the operation that you need to do and doing the basics of the stuff. You know, this is just standard simplifying. Well, yes, it is important. Um, you know, it's usually assessed at a different, you know, portion of time. Um, all right, well, I got three more problems. So I do need to keep this, I need to kind of move along here quicker. So here's the exact same problem, um, exact same type of problem. Just find your LCD, which in this case is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, so therefore I multiply here by x minus 3. Here, multiply by x minus 3. Here, going to be x plus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so therefore this is going to be a 9 times x plus 1 plus 2x times x minus 3. Right? And then my common denominator is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 1. All right? And I'm just going to leave it like that. Obviously, you could simplify it the exact same way. You know, I simplified the other problem. Um, but for time purposes, I'm going to leave that in here. Now, on this next example, you could write the LCD as x, mi x squared minus 4 times x minus 2. But once you get a little bit of experience of doing these problems, what you will notice is, that this problem already fact this problem actually can be factored down into x minus 2 times x plus 2. So therefore, the LCD in this problem is simply just x minus 2 times x plus 2. And that's really helpful because now this expression already has the LCD. So you don't need to multiply, you don't need to do anything over here. All you need to do is multiply this term by x plus 2. So if you would have chosen the LCD to be x squared minus 4 times x minus 2, that's fine. You still would have wanted to factor it out. But what you would have done is you would have to gone through more simplifying at the end, just like when we talked about fractions. You can multiply fract, you know, you can do operations with the fractions without simplifying. You're just going to have to simplify at the end. So it's much easier to do it on the, on the front end. Because then you didn't have to go through the operations over here. So you're just left with x plus 4 minus 15 times x plus 2 and then over my common denominator of x minus 2 times x plus 2, 
which again, as we mentioned, could be, you know, again, simplified. Um, over here is again another example of a term, an expression that can be factored. What two numbers multiply to give you negative four and then add to give you What two numbers multiply to give you negative 4 and then add to give you a positive 5x? Um, well, the numbers that multiply to give me a negative 4 is going to be a, let me just make sure I multiply that, plus 5x, yeah. So in this case, you can see that um, that cannot be factored down because you could have that as a positive 5 and a positive 4. That would add to give you positive 5x, but they don't multiply to give you negative 4x. Um, so this is going to be an example of where my LCD, so here you could simplify it down, but just be okay. It's okay. Not all of them are going to be simplified. So this one, my LCD, is simply just the product of my denominators. So again, I'll multiply this denominator by, um, so this denominator gets multiplied by x plus 7. And then here is going to be multiplied by x squared plus 5x minus 4. And I don't really have room to do it on the top and bottom. So hopefully you'll just be able to follow me here. It's going to be x squared minus 5 times x plus 7 minus x plus 3 times x squared plus 5x minus 4. And that's going to be all over my LCD, which is x squared plus 5x minus 4 times x plus 7. Whew. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add and subtract rational expressions. Thanks.